Okay, guys, I'm going to start a series on muscle bikes. Um, the reason for this is I have incredibly bad news. Um, Jade Shadow is no more. Um, a pickup truck in a parking lot. Anyway, um, a lot of time and effort into her. I loved her very much. It's taken me a few weeks to come to terms with things, but it's time to get a new motorcycle. So I want to do a quick series on muscle bikes um, that I'm considering. The economy being what it is, the craziness going on in the world. I don't think I'm ready to just go out there and drop $30,000, which is the class of bikes that I normally ride. So to that effect, I think that uh, the best choice here is to see which bike I can find used that will fit my riding style the best. And I'm normally a muscle bike kind of guy. So let's take a look at a few different options that are out there and see what we think about these bikes. So stand by, we're getting ready to do the first video. Okay, guys, first bike that we're going to look at is a Honda Valkyrie. You may never have heard of the Honda Valkyrie, but I'm telling you, this is one badass bike. Um, it's come out in two versions, well, technically three. We're going to talk about all three of those and why this bike, which you may never have heard of, is a huge contender in the world of muscle bikes. See, Honda stunned the marketplace when they built the Valkyrie. This bike was a muscle cruiser born straight out of a Goldwing. That's right. They took a Goldwing and they turned it into a high-performance muscle bike. In this video, we're going to cover everything that you need to know about this rare bike. Now, the Honda Valkyrie popped on the scene in 1997 and ran to 2003, and its designation, depending on where in the world you were purchasing it, was either a GL1500C or F6B. It came back after a little hiatus in the year 2014 and hung around in 2015. And a variant of it, um, which we'll talk about as well, called the NRX1800, um, both shared that designation. The bike was conceptually a muscle cruiser, but it shared many, many components with the Goldwing, including the engine. As you can see from the picture here, this bike was built for the road. It had the beef, it had the brawn, it looked mean and it felt mean, but it had comfort. It was super smooth, it fit a passenger very comfortably, Easy to do a thousand mile tour on this bike. It was just an incredible idea at the time. The initial version of the bike, Generation 1, had a 1520cc, which is a 93 cubic inch engine, that had a carburetor for each cylinder and a special cam. The initial engine put out 100 horsepower. Remember, this is 1997, folks. 100 horsepower and two, or 102 foot-pounds of torque. 
Top speed was governed at 131 miles an hour, which is higher than many bikes today. The um, big thing about the bike was it was heavy. It was 200, I'm sorry, 721 pounds wet. But once that you got moving, you did not feel the weight on this bike. That torque kicked in and you were gone. This bike was made in the USA at the Honda plant in Ohio. Can you imagine it, folks? In the era preceding the muscle bike, you had this guy that was extremely smooth and had over 100 foot-pounds of torque and 100 horsepower. Talk about wow. Now, this bike evolved into three distinct models. The first one, the GL1500C, was the roadster of the group. It was derived from the B. The GL1500CT became the tour model and added that um, set of panniers or saddlebags on there that were a hard saddlebag and changed up the suspension in the fender a little bit for longer distance travel. And then the ultimate one was the GL1500CF, also known as the Interstate, that had all the comforts of the Goldwing, but it was packed into the muscle of the Roadster. That bike was incredible. Take a look at the fairing on that, folks. But Honda didn't stop there. The next bike variant coming up was mind-blowing and took everybody by surprise. The year was 2004. The Honda Valkyrie Rune was a very special model. Honda introduced the limited edition model in 2004 named the Rune. It was an 1,832cc engine, which was 111.8 cubic inches for you Americans. Sourced directly out of the Goldwing fifth generation. It was a major departure from the original Valkyrie in styling and purpose. The objective of the Rune was to be a tour de force to shock and scare the other manufacturers and tell them what Honda could develop. To quote the project leader, no performance goals, no distinct function, purchase price, not a consideration. Its debut price in 2004 was $27,000. However, note this, it actually cost Honda more than $100,000 to build each one of these bikes. That's mostly due to the fact that besides the engine, all the remaining parts were custom made by Honda exclusively for the Rune, and they only built 3,000 bikes for the entire world. So how do you follow up that story, right? Well, for 2014 and 15, Honda brought back the Valkyrie name for a redesigned Generation 5 Goldwing coded the NRX1800C. This bike had a futuristic style. It put out a whopping 117 horsepower and 123 foot-pounds of torque, and it had a 50-50 weight distribution. It came in just slightly heavier than the previous model at 750 pounds. ABS was an option. Not everybody wanted it, but I'm telling you, with this kind of bike, they should have got it. The bike experienced one large problem, and that was the price tag. Back in 2014, this bike came out without bags, without a lot of creature comforts, with a $17,000 price tag. This was considered at the time to be out of reach for the target buyers that this bike was centered on. There are a handful of videos out there from people that did um, test drives on these and reviews of these bikes, but there's not a lot. Uh, the bike was a hard seller initially. It hung around for several years in showrooms and ultimately had to be sold for in the price range of nine to $10,000 just to move them after they had been taking up real estate for so long. However, on the used market, this is a cult classic at this point. It is still pulling nine to $10,000 on the used market and there are a group of collectors that absolutely love this bike. The presence, the comfort, the power, all stock is ext 
extremely impressive. So that is the Honda Valkyrie. It is hard to find one to do a test drive on now, so I wish I had footage to share with you, but I don't. However, this bike is one that I am seriously considering looking for, even if I have to go across country to find. Please give me your thoughts and your opinions and any experiences that you've had on a Honda Valkyrie. I appreciate you participating in this video and watching it to the end. Have a great one. I'll see you on the next video. Ride safe.